Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Kaiser Redux. I'm your host, Mr. Eurasia Lover, but Earth, every single one of you, Russian citizens, should at once ask himself, who am I? Why do I exist? And I believe that the majority of you will find it hard to answer these questions. They are complex, and they're quite serious, but I will give you the answer. You are an Eurasian person. You live at the joints of two major civilizations, the European one and the Asian one. Our great country is the only ever one to exist that has had an amazing chance to contemplate how these two civilizations run into one. Uh, and Tubitskoy, 1928. We are special. But legitimizing Eurasianism. The Eurasians have publicly announced the establishment of the new state Eurasia, and the establishment of basically a new religion of Eurasianism, and started the process of the nation building. But, since the very establishment of the Union, the Eurasian citizens still lacked formal identification of the new nationality and citizenship. With the successful internalization of Eurasianism by many Russian citizens, the party has decided to adopt the new ID system, and widely expand it so that not every single citizen will receive formally personality, formal personality identification. By issuing new Eurasian passports to every citizen, we can ensure that they can move around the country, protected by the law and the police, and be treated as equal. The new Eurasian passport will, be, will mention citizenship of the Union of Eurasian Republics and the Eurasian nationality for everyone. The ethnic minorities will also have Eurasian nationality in the passports, but with their minor nationality mentioned in the brackets. The reform will ensure stability as we're doing power of the orthodoxy. I can't remember if I read this. Yeah, I think I read this one as well yesterday, but if you'd like to re read it. Please go right ahead. In which the only the only true Eurasianists, seduced by false ideologies <clears throat> of either socialism or national populism, our party is split into factions. We know that, but we know that we are the only ones who stay in the path of Eurasianism. Oh, absolutely. As we are still trying to promote monarchism here, it is quite the struggle, but it is a struggle worth having, my friends. In which up next, uh, let's see, we can close that out, we can close that out, we're not at war yet, Legation Council, don't really care about that right now, we have more of industry that we need to build, so, what else is new, you know, but, which is fine, uh, we have six research slots, which is really good, at least compared to, like, uh, what we're trying to do, like, our industry sucks, it, it just, let's be honest here, our industry is garbage, but, but, at the same time, do we actually attack here and win? Probably not, um, at least the research slot's good, you know. Nah, okay, well, that sucks. Well, I'm just gonna hang out for now, you know, until the whole thing explodes, so. Which is, it, let's be real, it's gonna explode eventually. But after Fleet and Bing, which is 39, so happy 39, everybody. Uh, probably get some more cap. Increased crop yields. New agricultural initiatives and blank have recently <clears throat> taken <laughs> or led to a larger bump of crops this year. Store shelves are hard to get, are full, and so are the bank accounts of the farmers. Of course, one way or another, a lot of the benefits of this abundant yield will trickle back to us in due time. Nadia Kudupskaya dies. Nadia Kudupskaya has passed away. Being Lenin's widow, she became the symbol for all the remaining Bolsheviks after the disaster of the Civil War. In 1922, she was elected for the Sixth Duma and started a campaign against illiteracy that, with the support of the president, launched in 1924. She decided not to participate in the Eighth Duma elections. Her last official appearance was on the First Council of the no Nové Bolsheviki Bloc. There she blessed Bilharin and said, Lenin has died, but his cause lives. Memento mori. Well, goodbye. In which we just need more... We just need more industry. Like, we gotta go with industry, man. I'm sorry. And then increase more authority as well. So, ideologically centrist? Well, we'll see what happens. Because authority of the center is still moderate, which is a little bit too high for us. Oh, oh, look at this. Question of the monarchy. The only true Eurasianist, yes. But the question of the monarchy. Mm. Oh, nice. Once we were against it, though neither Tsar nor dictator should rule the nation of free people. But something has changed. The wreckage of the once most developed democracies across the world teach us a lesson that a common person believes in Tsar and his divine leadership as the only true way. Yes, to the good. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, current motion will be voted on? Oh, we're voting for something? I'm not paying attention. Oh. Well, we're not even on it, so I don't. Why, why do we care? Creation of a legationary navy. Well, good luck with that, guys. <laughs> Man, poor infrastructure still sucks. Divided naval staff still... Oh, oh my gosh. Naval doctrine research be super bad. Eurasianism is beautiful. <clears throat> Head of intelligence, of course. Rule intelligence, yes. Awesome as well. Uh, let's see. We have Okrana, which is good. We have experienced military, which is very good. Australasian guard coup. Eurasianist enlightenment. We lose a lot of political power. Oh, boy. A stability and worse part. We get some more consumer goods. Average compliance integrate. 0 0.305. Integration time, 101 days. Huh. Industrialized nation is very good as well. Uh, Nuzensta is also very awesome. And I'm thinking like intelligence is very good too, and Orthodox state religion. 
Nice, not bad. As we are desperately trying to build up more roads and stuff like that, and honestly, I don't know if we'll, how how efficient we're really going to be here, trying to build ourselves up like this, but because we'll see space. A unique combination of landscapes where our nation has been born is called Mr. Avazaziti. A tentacle, the taiga of Olanets in the forest and steps. An unlimited expanse, and it is natural for uh, uh, expanse of sea and horizonless sky. Our Eurasian state is a living organism and is natural for it to, of course, expand. The space is the reason we have people speaking Russian, Habin and Vladivostok, and Bukhara and Baku and Warsaw and Lemberg. We shall protect our space, and we shall conquer more space, says P. Savitsky, 1934. Vast expanses of the motherland. So let's do Siberian. Why not? The investment debate. Um, if you want to about this, please go right ahead. Keep it small. We're going to make a large, thick investment. And I always do this one, which honestly, which is probably still what we need. If factories, infrastructure, blueprints. Um, honestly, just we need we just need industry. Like holy crap, we need a lot of industry. And make sure we're always building at least one milli at the same time. We 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 need millies. Like overall, this is looking not too bad. We need a lot more bombers. We need a lot more artillery though. Where we're headed, and maybe some anti-air would be nice as well. Uh, it doesn't take too much to produce it, which is good, but still. But, the Eurasianism en masse. Uh, is there any re prerequisites for this? No, good. The Eurasianist movement has grown to become the widespread ideology our country has ever witnessed. It's spread into politics, history, art, science, education, and become almost a religion. Our popular support is great, and there's almost no opposition due to the Duma and State Senate being completely under influence. All underground anti-Eurasianist activities are suppressed, and people are generally in favor of a rule. However, there are still people who threaten our motherland from abroad, after they've tried to seize power. Maxi and Gumilev allow the country, though still being active, while no suppression of their supporters has ever been implemented, some circles of less left Eurasianists and young Eurasianists are still present in our country. Uh, intelligence has reported that Maxi is in the French commune, along with the Bolsheviks and other anti-Eurasianist socialist groups. Gumilev is somewhere in Mongolia or China, and is said to be doing some field research and refraining from politics. We don't know if we can trust this or not, but what we know is that we are the only true Eurasianists, and any nonconformity should be persecuted. Savitsky has suggested that we should fund secret operations to locate Maxi, Maxi and Gumilev and get rid of them silently. He was supported by Vanadsky Van and some of the party members, including Tubetskoy, though reluctantly. The fate of the operation depends on the decision of Pyotr Savitsky. Wiped off this map of history? Nice. Uh, but they're not any danger to regimes out. We'll do that one. A third of the center does go up, which I don't like. So. You know what? Center goes down. Low. Party stability is low. Well, maybe that's bad. And I don't. Yeah, whatever. I just want this one to go high. It's alright. Happens. Deutsche Madagascar and Goringa. And then the Tsar of all the Russians. Or we can do this one. A resignation. Formation of the anti-goring pact. Wow. You gotta be really bad with goring. Wow. I don't know what to say. Oh my goodness. Max factories in the state would be pretty nice to get though. One indivisible. Well, let's do this one first. This has always been true. That our nation has lived under oppression for centuries. We should be united and strong. Under the guidance of the Eurasian party, we should present this possibility to our citizens. Nice. Very cool. Anything else? Promote monarchism? Navigate party unity. Reform the Senate. This is reform the Senate, but this is for Jakobsen. I don't want to increase him, so uh, this one's very good. Get more organization, please, please, please. Nice. All right, Connet is gone. Goodbye. It's a little bit ahead of time. Get some better engineers. Wait. Oh, my bad. Uh, let's come over here and... Oh! The well, market has to be restored. I'll do that first. The Ch Chikhaizda proposal. Chikhaizda has delivered a large speech in the Senate. We theoretically justify that the restoration of the Romanov monarchy is necessary to achieve popular support of our government. He comes with a tsar back. War legitimacy can be secured and a long tradition of monarchy will continue. The Senate, however, was divided on the issue. The one stated that we should not move away from orthodox Eurasianist doctrine, but the others believe in Chikhaizda's thesis. With Chikhaizda's authority being rather high, this proposal is likely to be passed by the majority of the Senate. However, they can also listen to the opinion of Chubetskoy and other founding fathers who are unlikely to support Chikhaizda. Rejected? Well, we're going this way anyway, so... My friends... Eurasia, one and invisible, and then the Tsar of all of Eurasia. The Tsar has returned. He was granted the throne of a new nation that has been built for him to rule. The borders of Eurasia are not limited by the borders drawn by Germans in the Treaty of Minsk. 
The majority of the world's population shall be ruled by the Eurasian Tsar. As it should be. Yes. Yes. Very good. Alright. Okay, not too bad. Very, very good. And since we're over here, we probably need to do this too much more. As the party's unstable. Um, is that bad? Promote monarchism is still racing. If I do this, uh, promote party unity amongst the followers to prevent our party from falling to radicalism once again. I want more monarchism. Will that do anything? I can't tell. I, 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 I it says unstable, but is that, do we care about that? I don't know. Um, assimilation of natives? Literacy is not too bad either. I'm gonna keep in increasing like development here too, so. Do that once, and then maybe we'll do one more of these right now. There you go. Cool. Very, very good. Uh, whatever. I don't really care if the crit clergy criticizes our government. No one cares. But some comments such as, what is the most fun Eurasianist path? And I'll be honest, I have no idea. I want, I want to do this route, and I also want to do the young Eurasians, which sound like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. So we'll see. No guarantees, but like, don't get me wrong, I do want to do both, all, all the routes here. So, yeah, we'll see. Should be a lot of fun. Second Melbourne Uprising, cool. I mean, army's not bad, but we'll see what happens. Fall of Beijing. Oh, goodbye, Beijing. What's going on over there? Someone, uh, some people really want me to do the Qing Chinese, so we'll see, but I don't know. The colored enfranchisement pa act passes. All right. Long Qing's looking pretty good. We could get involved down here, but it's so messy, I don't really feel like it. Oh, hello. Are you losing? Sergey. Sergey. Son. We invested in you. How could you be losing here? A resignation? Chubetskoy of Ozois was in his thoughts, looking through some papers at the table. He briefly read the report of the government on current issues and sighed heavily. He was tired. He was looking at the photograph in the frame, which depicted himself, Vanatsky, Vanadsky, and Savitsky at the beginning of the careers as politicians at the First Congress of the Eurasianist Party. It was almost 20 years ago, when he was younger and more ambitious now, after many months of being the head of the government. Chubetskoy was really tired, moreover. He was not feeling as ambitious as his party associates, who were or pretended to be as vigorous as earlier. Chubitskoy's lost his unshakable authority over the Eurasians' policy and party, but he did everything he could to ensure our victory. He has won the elections and has been a highly proficient prime minister during all this time. It's time to step down and continue to work steadily in the Senate where almost nothing can bother him. Chubitskoy steps down as prime minister. Nice. And heir to the throne. When the first disputes have finally been settled, the other ones arose. Who shall be the Tsar? After the revolution, the successors to the throne have been disputed between the royal family members. We can help them solve this question finally simply by choosing the preferable Arab. The first candidate is self-proclaimed Emperor of all Russian exile, Kirill Vladimirovich. The second candidate is Dmitry Pavlovich, former Speaker of the Senate and aristocrat and one of the VNS party leaders. The third candidate, suggested by Chikaiza himself, is the young Prince Andrei Alexandrovich, the eldest nephew of the last Tsar Nicholas II. I, 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 ooh, the Eurasian Empire. I've got to go with this guy. Alex, is this Alexei? Andre. Look at this. Ah, oh, yes. The heir of Norway. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. And then, a royal constitution. Uh, principles of ge geopolitics, though. The geopolitics is a study of the effects of Earth's geography on politics and internal relations. Our new geography, a barrier between Europe and Asia, has developed our culture and national self consciousness. We shall use a precious geographic location to finally become a, the great power, or a great power, as some would probably say instead. We are not one of the great powers, we are, or will be, a great power in our own right. Nice. Good. We need more rubber. I guess extraction really wouldn't do much there for us, but whatever. Fuel refining, nice. That's pretty useful. Uh, land doctrine is coming along. Um, oh, nice. Good job, guys. Kill each other off. There you go. So, who's in the Reichspact? Second Son of Japanese War. We're going to need more infantry divisions, like... Hmm. We might want to take out the Cossacks first, though. I want to get through all this stuff first. Um, is there anything for... Was there nothing for taking out enemies? We change the flag, but culture. Ah, cultural singularity cannot be viewed as European or Asian. Instead, it is Eurasian, a mixture, an alloy. We shall turn to our ancestors, children of Tehran, children of Genghis Khan, brave warriors, equestrians, and skilled workers. We shall never forget our origins and roots, and we shall always remember who we are, the Eurasians. P. Savitsky, nineteen twenty-six. The sun rises in the east, and of course sets in the west. <coughs> Keep going. Oh, territorial integration? Sounds pretty good to us, yes. 
Increase crop yield. So if you want to buy that again, please go right ahead. More, more industry. Please, for the love of God, more industry. Najd, good. Making more divisions, which is nice. We're doing the best we can with what we have. Because we will try to get these guys all at the same time, but we'll see what happens. Oh, what the heck? Wait, did you get... Oh, hello. Yeah. This is so weird. And then Royal Constitution. The Tsar of all Eurasias. By the grace of God, we, Andre the First, Emperor and Autocrat of all of Eurasia, Moscow, Kiev, Vladimir, Novgorod, Tsar of Kazan, Tsar of Astrakhan, Tsar of Poland, Siberia, Chesone, Tarian, George, Lord of Tsarkov, and Prince Grand... Grand Prince of Smolsk, Lithuania, Volnia, Polodia, Finland, Prince of Estland, Livland, Korland, Semegalia, Semogatia, Belotsk, Karelia, Tver, Ugarski, Lan, Perm, Vyatka, Bulgar, and others, Loren, Grand Prince of Ninsi, Novgorod, Chernigov, Gryazan, Polotsk, Rostov, Yaroslav, Belozersk, Udorsky, Lan, Obdorsk, Kondia, Dubetsk, Minslav, and all the northern counties, and countries, Master and Lord of Iberia, Kartil, Kartli and Kar uh, Kabardia lands and Armenian Armenian provinces, hereditary sovereign and ruler of the Circassian mountains, princes and others, Lord of Turkestan, heir of Norway, Duke of Schleswig-Holstein, Stormin, Dittmash, and Oldenburg, and others and others and others, and glory to the Tsar, the royal constitution, the new constitution. Of the Eurasian Empire has been adopted that has greatly increased the Senate power and made a royal and aristocratic leadership legitimate, as it should be. Let's do Southern Zemsta now. Uh, we're gonna go big, go home. Let's do bureaucratic matter this time. Let's try something different. I really don't know what we can do anything here, so I'm just gonna close out of it. Oh, we're still down here. Look at this. Oh, we're fighting. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the guys are veterans. Look at that. I did make want to make our guys like 40 combo with, but these guys first need like engineers. So throw it on there. I don't care. We got a lot of light tanks, huh? Not bad, still. I feel like with Russia, every no matter what campaign you do, and especially because of Redux, if you're playing such a hard game of catch up, it's not great. At least that's my opinion. You know, I have those occasionally, but like, because like it just you're playing such a game of catch up, which makes sense. Don't get me wrong, it does make sense, but you know what? I like to sometimes not play catch up. Cool. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna put five tanks here. We're gonna take off. You know what? Honestly, we take off five. We take off ten. It's fine. Because the light tanks will just become. We're gonna use modern, not modern. Medium tanks a whole bunch more. So medium tanks will come along. That's why we just keep building, 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 building. Nice, another middle of your city. Awesome. Royal Constitution. <laughs> and the social hierarchy. Liberty, egality, fraternity. What it is, if not a lie. Because we know that people were never equal, and not equal now, and never will be equal. All the greatest empires have always been ruled by the best. Intellectuals, nobles, aristocrats. They are the people who know what is power and how to handle that power. Just ask our big man, Putin. But seriously, once uh, Germany goes to war, we'll go to war it's probably as well, so. Yeah. He's waiting for it to kick off and for them to invest a whole bunch and to take out the French. And how are our planes? Probably really not good. Some casts. Cool. Yeah, that'll, that'll suffice for now. But... Yes, we'll finish that stuff up too. This stuff is coming along very nicely, and the Eurasian Senate don't really care. Oh, well, look at Iran. Look at the Ottomans. Ah, good. Better guns. Um, Better tanks. Not bad. Not bad. Come over here. This is quite the mess. I'm not going to lie. This is very messy. Holy cruddy fathers. Wow. We do it too. It's fine. Lose some stability. We just need more. 
I wish we could get like, claims on everything here. All of Eurasia. It'd be a lot of fun. But maybe we do not. Oh, we also gotta get these guys too. Oh, we definitely gotta get that one. Holy, well, my bad. I should spend more time getting that stuff, but whatever. Get more, 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 more. Build, build, build. Yeah, we definitely need way more support equipment. Oh my goodness. Gun-wise, we're okay. Plane-wise, we're not great. We have cast. Well, I want to be building cast. Nah, you know what? We'll keep it. Why not? Screw it. I'm not going to bother with it. So because we made that, we can switch things up a little bit more. But a new Royal Constitution is very nice. Oh, better energy is nice. Better recon? Nice. The Royal Constitution. Upon the changes in the political system of the Eurasian Union and restoration of the monarchy, the government has drafted a new Royal Constitution that mentions the Tsar as a head of state. Though he has almost no power and is more of a mere figurehead, the Constitution will increase the legitimacy of the monarch. According to the new Constitution, the powers of the Senate and the government will be greatly increased, while the Duma will be transformed into a deliberative body, a new Constitution for the Empire, even more political power, stability, strength limit, and war support. Oh my goodness. Almost two a day. Oh, that's so nice. I wonder what that... Oh, hello. Oh, well, no wonder there's another tree down here. Oh, crap. I don't know. Expansionism. Uh, by taking this, you'll have more aggressive options in the events, focuses and decision at the cost of increasing world tension and angering the countries around you. Seek allies. Idea. I believe you understood my lessons right. Our principles you should always remember and never forget. Remember your origins and remember who you are. The idea is what rules a nation, what makes people fight in wars for the survival. The idea that they can be free, of course. But that they can live, love, and marry, earn a living. Our nation of Eurasians should be founded on a conscious idea rather than the materialistic ideals. And I want... For every Russian, Ukrainian, Bura, Tartar, remember this idea. We are Eurasians, and we shall persevere and preserve our unique culture. And the beginning was the idea. Nice. Crash the Reich's Pact. Cool. Second Valkyrie? Yes. Um, real politic. I don't really care about seeking allies. It doesn't really matter to me. Secure Central Asia seems like a really good idea. Fuck into the Caucasus. This seems like a really good idea. Oh, we need to be a faction leader, though. Oh, see, cows. Yeah, we need to be affectionate it anyways. Um, United Pirates. Cool. The man was Karelia. This seems like... It seems like we need to go aggressive. Like, real politique sounds like fun. I think I might go real politique when we do, like, left Eurasianist, maybe? Maybe? Um, Expansionism. I definitely want to do this one. The theory of expansionism constitutes that Russia's borders are only safe as they are distant from the heartland. Every neighboring state which is not a puppet of the Russian state is, as such, a threat to a tar or a target, depending on the military and political strength. Needless to say, this adaptation of policies will not be well liked by the rest of the world versus re po real politique. It's the politics of diplomacy based primarily on considerations of given circumstances and factors, rather than explicit ideological notions or morals or ethical pro premises. The term politique is some real politique. It's sometimes used pejoratively to imply politics that are coercive, amoral, or Machiavellian. We enjoy this notion. Um, really aggressive, but maybe that's what I want. Hmm. Fly to the Latvians. After at the prompting of the Latvian government, the large numbers of Latvians have started a relief of the new Latvian state. Good riddance. Goodbye. I keep doing that because we can. Nice. Because we're going to need more divisions. Like up here. Cool, so this army is completely decked out. So we're going to need some guys up here before we go to war with the Reich's pack. So let these guys kill each other. Seriously, let them kill each other. Makes each other weaker. And then we can come stomping on in, probably. Mm, yeah, we are very strong here. New schools open. If you want to that, please go ahead. Oh, wow. 100 political power? Wow. That's intense, man. Get some constructions. Yeah. We have to. So, now... Enemy in the west seems like a good idea. Enemy in the east. 
Bringing back Table of Ranks. The Table of Ranks is an official list of positions and ranks of the military, government, and court of the Russian Empire. Firstly introduced by Peter the Great, the Table of Ranks was abolished by the Bolsheviks soon after the coup in 1917, but later it was never re-established, leaving our ant countries with everyone equal. With the monarchy restored, it is time to re-establish the Table of Ranks. That will formally secure the social hierarchy, however. Some senators are against the re-establishment, and claiming that this will only deepen the social tensions in the country. Uh, right-leaning? Or, oh, we had to make a choice? Um... Seems like probably the right wing thing to do. Yeah, we get more stability though. Uh, expect foreign designs, armor. Markov has suggested the establishment or establishing a national school for armored training would help us master the art of mobile warfare. As we'll find the most talented men in Russia to lead our armored spearheads. Followed up with special forces. I want more land auction if possible. If not, that sucks. I mean, it doesn't look like we can't get that. Armor's not bad. Frontline commissars. Air reduction is not bad. I do want the ORT system. Air superiority is not bad. Fighters is not bad. Uh, let's do resource pros uh, prospection because we're going to get a lot of political power anyways. Russia is a vast land with many hidden treasures lying just beneath the surface. By funding operations to prospect for various resources, we can enrich our country. Sounds like a good idea. Conference is over. Cool. Oh, yeah, that always happens. Cool. Train as well. We're enemies, at, but the back will be more enemies of us anyway, so. Um. They allowed it. And we'll take it. The enemy of my enemy is. Well, my enemy. I don't really want to spend time with doing this stuff just too much yet. But we need to, but still. Do bureaucratic matters. Ah, no, let's do local research facilities. I usually don't do that one, so. And re relatively right leaning. Well, should I go back to the. Is it possible to go to the left, maybe? Oh, that's not bad. Orthodox Church wouldn't be too bad. Oh no, we'll see. You can grab that stuff too. There you go. So I want to invest more stuff, man. Oh. No? We're good. Get more millies, get more millies. Nice. See what you can do here. Hmm. Yeah, why not? So, hidden sympathies, huh, man? Huh? Well, we'll see what you can do. And then ZIS, yeah, resources, then build downs on the Volga. That'd probably be best. Two days left. We really need tanks. So then, build downs on the Volga. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Hydroelectricity is a clean and good source of much lacking energy for Russia. With the construction of three dams on the Volga River, we could massively satisfy our power for need. Or need for power. Yeah. Need for power, probably. Not bad. Like assimilation natives, uh, minorities is very good. After this, uh, we're probably just going to go ahead and invade. Uh... Oh, it goes Lisbon. Central Asia. But you know what? I do want to say this for you guys. I want your opinion. Should we do expansionism? Or should we go down with real politique? What do you think would be better for a monarchy... Monarchy? Monarchy-focused... Slightly centrist Eurasian Empire? Tell me what you think. Which route should we go? Expansionism versus real politique? Let, us, let me know in the comments below. Oh, look at that. We are getting some army XP. Look at that. Nice. Very good. So, since we're here, um, we pretty much got everything I wanted on these guys. I would love anti-air, but we don't have the, you know, stuff for it, so. 40s it is. Because in the next episode, we are really going to get involved in the war, so. 
two, three. Stand bullet pack, nice. Um, uh, military police. It's almost 40. Um, grab some of this stuff, actually. Nice, thank you. Uh, Nikolai Karasnov dies, a prominent Russian architect, academic, and politician. Nikolai Karasnov has passed away at the age of 75. Memento Mori. Like always. Hope our guys learn a whole bunch. Actually, you know what? You guys can be the new boys here. Even more. And then, after this... I did want to go tank, so... Musket. Medium tanks. Defense and speed. Oh, maybe speed. Let me try something different. Let's go with speed, maybe. She'll be learning quite a bit, though. Nice. There go them pirates. Goodbye, yar. Arr, pirates. Yar. Baltic left stand. Oh, look at all those resources we could mine. Don't really need it too much, though, honestly. As much as great as it would be, we just need rubber. But, let's see, what are we going to do next? Yeah, some of the Volga. And maybe we'll do... V... D... V... Eh. Import foreign specialists? Yeah. I think our country never had an armed division before its recent reforms, and is lacking comp competent commanders and theorists to make our division effective. Fortunately, the world is full of these men. All we have to do is invite them to our country. Which I think I read before, but whatever. Hmm. So we're here first. Speed defense, why not? Oh! Are they fighting. Oh! Oh, they're fighting against these guys too! Whoa! Oh, this might be time now to go to war with these guys. Oh boy. Alright, yes, 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 yes. Hey, tanks are out finally. There you go. Really, uh, you're up here. Failure of the Halifax Conference? Nice. Yeah, the Halifax is doomed then. We'll get someone else here to replace him. There you go. Cool. Deck conversions, nice. Might as well get the next one too. Don't even bother me too much with this. Awesome. We got the ones that we really care about. Um, this one's slower immediately, so. Can we actually. Make something relatively okay -ish here. Your engines. The heavy ship engines are better. Yeah, nice. Yeah, this is honestly not that bad. It's not great. Don't get me wrong, it's not great. But it'll definitely work for what we need. If we need it, so. Yeah, I don't think there's any way Russia or Germany can realistically win here, so... Yeah, we'll see. Sure, why not? Always doing it. Dams on the Volga, then we'll do that one, and then maybe we'll do one more as well, such as Navy Modernization. Might as well. Better stand proud amongst the great nations of Europe again. Let's build a new modern navy that can challenge great powers of Europe and the world. But unfortunately, I've got to end it there. Like, make this video a little shorter than. Shorter, short like the last one. But I'm really just waiting to see what your guys' response are for. Whether we should do expansionism versus real politics. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will get involved into this god-awful European war and finally expand our...
Borders, Empire of Japan. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.